everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with a contemporary recommendations video. You guys commented and gave me a whole bunch of categories that you wanted to get some recommendations in, and today I am here to give you some recommendations. Diverse recommendations non-romantic recommendations, darker taboo recommendations, unpopular recommendations, and sexy time recommendations. So that's what I'm here to give you. All right, so I'm gonna start off with just diverse recommendations for contemporaries, and there is a ton of them. So I'm going to start off with The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which is about the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as police brutality. Loved this book. It was one of my favorites. This is the UK cover. Love, love, love. Also, The Upset of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli is diverse. This has a uh, main character who is of Jewish descent. She has a sister who is African-American. Her one ma mother is African-American. Her other mother is not. She does come from biracial lesbian parents. And it, there's just tons of diversity within this book. It is amazing. History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Adam Silvera has, I think to date at least, written all male male books, male male romance books. This is a really, really great one. Also going to go ahead and throw out uh, Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. Zappia. She also wrote, which I will also recommend, um, Eliza and Her Monsters. But this one is specifically about mental health representation, particularly bipolar disorder. This one with like hallucinations. This one was a good one for mental health rep. Jeff Zetner, anything Jeff Zetner. I have uh, The Serpent King right here, but in this one and Goodbye Days, there's diversity, not as like a main focus necessarily maybe, but there is some diversity in there. I also think that if you're looking for like more of a sexy time romance, that the hymn duology by, who wrote that? Male Male Romance Hockey Based. That one is phenomenal. I will take that anytime. Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash, which I have not read yet, but is a part of my TBR for it. Um, this one is about a female-female romance, I believe. You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone, and that one is by somebody that I can't remember. I'll put up the cover. You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone is about a Jewish family, Jewish twins, and Huntington's disease. So there's like religious and like medical diversity in that one. Also, Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. That one is about a girl with select mutism and a deaf boy love interest. So that one. Both very, very fantastic books. I loved them both. Non-romantic. So non-romantic was a little bit harder for me to come up with, honestly, because a lot of stuff is just romantic, or at least has some romance in it. I'm going to go ahead and say The Serpent King by Jeff Sentner, because there is like a romance aspect in this at some point, but like it is not a main focus, like at all. So there's very little. This one is really about a group of friends. I would say I'd be hard pressed to call this a romantic um, book. I'm going to say The Smell of Other People's Houses. This one does have, again, little hints of romance, but it is absolutely not a focal point. This one is a fantastic story about a small town in Alaska and all these interweaving st stories. And there's like hints of romance, but like very not a focal point. So I would say the two of those. This one was my hardest one to recommend. So if you have any non-romantic contemporaries, definitely put them in the comments down below because some people are looking for non-romantic contemporaries and I just don't have that many. Even though I like darker contemporaries a lot of the time, there's usually still some aspect of romance. So those were the two that I felt like were most distanced from romance. But other than that, I didn't have a ton. So definitely let me know what you think. Um, if you have any other suggestions, let me know down below. Darker Taboo, I have a bunch because I like dark and taboo contemporaries. So I would say anything Jeff Zentner, not necessarily taboo, but it is dark. Like there's like heartbreaking aspects to all of his stories that I particularly really, really enjoy. I'm also going to say somebody that I haven't read yet, which I hate doing, but I do want to read, and that is Taryn Fisher. Taryn Fisher is an indie author, so she is self-published. She also falls into the lesser known category, which I will mention later, but this one in particular is Mudvayne. This is like a collector's edition. I forget, anniversary edition. Um, all of her contemporaries do have like some kind of romance, but they're also a lot darker. There's some kind of like troubledness to all of her stories. And so I would say she definitely qualifies as like a dark contemporary writer. Follow Me Back by A.V. Geiger is a darker contemporary. I, I would also say that Invincible Summer, which is by Hannah Moskowitz. Yes, maybe. This one seems like it's going to be like a light fluffy contemporary. It's not. It's dark. Uh, not taboo necessarily. It's like uh, 
two different sets of parents that are really really good friends and they have a summer home across the street from one another and then their kids kind of meet up their kids have little romances there is uh trigger warnings for uh rape there's not a rape described in this but there is a rape that occurs that you kind of learn about throughout the process of this book there's also a deaf child in this book so it's diverse in that aspect this one i cried so freaking hard at this book this is one that stuck with me that i thought was going to just be like a fluffy contemporary that i could read next to the pool because like the cover looks like it's just like a fluffy contemporary this thing made me cry so hard this one also falls into the lesser known or unpopular contemporaries this was no joke dark and taboo continues with the girl in 6e by a.r torre this one is about a murderous cam girl so you get uh, insight into the cam girl industry the different kinks that her customers have it definitely has tons of sexy time but also murder like it's sexy time mixed with murder it's weird um i loved it this series was amazing i freaking freaking loved it so that one for sure also going to throw out there another one that you guys know i loved to hate and loved to like think about but it was so disturbing. This is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Brain Greenwood. This is a novel that is about pedophilia, drug abuse, and children that fall through the cracks of the system, and it is disturbing. It is deeply, deeply troubling, and if any of those things are triggers for you, then this is not for you. So many emotions regarding this book. It is beautiful writing, and I know it's very hard to reconcile beautiful writing with a topic like this and romanticized pedophilia, because that's basically what this comes down to. I still, I loved it, and it's super taboo, so that one's no joke. I'm also going to go for The Dark and Twisty uh, for We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which I will not talk about any more than that, because that would just be really spoilery, because there's no way to talk about this book without, like, discussing the spoiler if you want to talk about why it's dark and twisty it just is but this one was fantastic i really loved it i also have a couple dark and twisty on my nook so i'm going to pull that up really quickly because i think that chelsea recommended one to me which i have not actually read yet which was called tampa it is tampa by alice Alyssa nutting and this one is about an eighth grade english teacher in suburban tampa who is undeniably attractive and I think she has an affair with a 14 year old boy. She has a singular sexual obsession for 14 year old boys and pursues it. She's becoming a teacher to fulfill her passion and provide access to her compulsion. This sounds horrific. This might have to happen for contemporary thon this time around. It's like a buttonhole but it looks like a vagina. So that's Tampa. It's a buttonhole. Looks like a vag. Opal Karoo. I will put some of her covers up here. Opal Karoo covers majority BDSM and taboo sexual subjects. Taboo. Like nothing's taboo with sex as long as it's consensual. But she covers like more hardcore BDSM type of stories. So Opal Karoo is definitely one that you can go to. I do have some of her books um, that I have read and I enjoyed them. That kind of stuff does not bother me. All right. Unpopular. Unpopular. I will say that Tampa book because I've never heard of it before. I will say Mudvayne by Taryn Fisher. Anything by Taryn Fisher I know is darker and also unpopular. Not necessarily because it's bad but because she's an indie author and you just don't know about her. I will say Follow Me Back by A.V. Hat av geiger this one is about like a social media cyber stalking kind of obsession with somebody that you know through social media type of a situation this one was not necessarily like disturbing but um i've never really heard of it on the internet or on booktube i haven't really heard of av geiger so this one is just a little bit lesser known if you're interested in that one and then i'm going to throw out some things that people don't normally think of when they think of contemporary a -thon. And that is nonfiction. So We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is not unknown or unpopular, but nonfiction in general is. So nonfiction can count as a contemporary. You can read any kind of a nonfiction book. Uh, a memoir would count. So those I'm going to throw in here just because I don't think people think about them. I have read a couple of different memoirs. I've read a lot of Chelsea Handler's memoirs. I read Tina Fey's memoir. I read No You Can't Touch My Hair and other things I still have to tell people. I'll also throw in some novellas. So novellas always count. They're not necessarily something that people think about. This one is The Tribulations of August Barton, which you just saw in a haul of mine. And this one is by Jennifer LeBlanc. She is an indie author that sent me this unsolicited, but I really enjoyed it. It's nice and short. It would be really great for a readathon. It really moved. And because, <coughs> shameless plug, I will say my book, Shoot Down the Windy Bird, a collection of flash fiction and poetry, 
by moi. The link is always down below if you guys are interested in buying it. But just know you can get it on Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Book Depository if you're international, Amazon on whatever country that you're in. Um, I've seen it on a ton of different other booksellers, Books A Million. Like it depends on where you are. But if you look for it, you will find it. I am partial to it. I really enjoy it. So there's those. And then for super sexy time, I'm gonna go with a couple of different series. You guys know I love my Paper Princess series, the Royal series by Aaron Watt. Aaron Watt is a writing duo, and this is not like only sexy time, but it's pretty sexy timey. I really enjoy this series a whole bunch. I'm also going to throw in the Stage Dive series by Kylie Scott. This is the first book, Lick, and it is amazing. This is follows a rock band. Each book follows one of the main players or like one of the members of this band and their love interests. Tons of sexy time and like I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The Billionaire's Sub. Like I'm just going through books that I have on here. The Billionaire's Sub would count I don't know what that is. I don't think I've read it yet. Melissa Foster. Melissa Foster is somebody that I read forever ago. I did an interview with her a really long time ago. She wrote Lovers at Heart, Wild Boys After Dark, Taken by Love, Game of Love. Uh, if you look up Melissa Foster on Goodreads, I do really like her writing style. She does have some female-female romance, some male-male romance. Some of her books are very diverse. I can't speak to all of them, but I have read some of hers that are incredibly diverse, and they are all contemporaries. Crescendo by Lee Brooke. I read that. That is a menage male-male-female. So if you wanted something that was like super sexy time and also a little bit risque, I think that they're all fantastic options if you're looking for a contemporary. You guys absolutely recommend your favorite contemporaries in the comments down below for people to check out. Let me know down below. Also, if you have non-romantic contemporaries, I don't have enough to recommend, honestly. Also, it was recommended to me that I try to recommend to you strictly contemporary booktubers for you to follow if that's like the thing that you read the most. I don't follow very many of those at all. Uh, the majority of what I read tends to be fantasy leaning or people that read diversely across a lot of different genres. So I really don't follow channels that are only contemporaries. However, I did send that recommendation on to Natasha and Chelsea. So check out their recommendation videos. They might have different books to recommend to you as well as booktubers that do only contemporary channels. Um, if you have a contemporary channel or you know somebody with a mainly contemporary channel, leave that in a comment down below as well. I will check them out, confirm it, and link them in the description box if that is the case. I will have links to Chelsea and Natasha's channel down below so you can check out their videos. I will also have the challenges, the dates, and information for Contemporary Thon listed down below because Obvi. Also down below are all of my social media links. You guys should follow me, especially on Instagram where I do Insta stories and talk about my books and my filming and unboxings all the time. I also have a link down there to Quills and Keys, which is my professional professional editing company, as well as Shoot Down the Wendy Bird, which is my book. So you guys can check all that out down there. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.